All of Raven Sports are sponsored by Bank of Easton, Easton Lions Club, Law Firm of Sutton and Sutton, Doug King Builders Incorporated. ECAT would like to thank all sponsors for their support in producing this sports season. Hello everybody and welcome to Nixon Gymnasium here for a MIAA Division II matchup between the Oliver Ames Tigers and Silver Lake Regional High School in this round of 32 matchup between the Tigers and the Lakers here. We are seeing Oliver Ames who is the number five seed in Division II come into this one at home with a chance to potentially get a win on their home floor. We saw the boys just two nights ago bring home a victory in a 32 v 33 matchup and tonight the girls will try to do the same starting for the Tigers we have per usual Avery Gamble Cameron Durba uh, Sarah Hilliard Cadence Durba and Maeve Horseman while for Silver Lake we are looking at a starting lineup of Sarah Miller Cassidy Conroy Kelsey Lanza Olivia Maka Mashka and Liliana Parmigiani as the tip goes out of bounds and it will be Silver Lake basketball. So Oliver Ames is going to press here out of the gate looking to cause some turnovers tonight as the ball is tipped out of bounds again by Maeve Horseman. Inbounded and here we go in the half court. It is Conroy starting at point guard here for Silver League, at least on this possession. Back to Conroy. She's going to let a three ball fly, and it is off. Not sure if it hit the rim or not, but that'll be all of Reims basketball. Tigers had themselves a very strong season coming in, I believe, second place in the Davenport this season, uh, right there with Mansfield and behind Foxborough who they suffered a loss to late in the season as the ball goes down low into Hilliard. She puts it up. No good. Rebound is going to go to number 22, 
on Silver Lake. That's Parmigiani, the freshman. Very young Silver Lake team here. They only have one senior, and she is not a starter. Three ball on the way for Miller, no good. Rebound goes to Conroy. She's fighting hard. Back out to Miller. Miller tries to go down, and they're going to call the foul on Maeve Horseman. It's going to be on the floor, so Silver Lake's going to take the ball out on an inbound here. Pass will be by Conroy. Jetting out is Parmigiani. They get it to Miller. Miller goes between the legs and gives onto the wing for Conroy. Tries to get it into the post, but is tipped away by Hilliard, but Sil Silver Lake's able to retain possession. Up fake by Conroy. She lets a long two go, and she gets it to go. They're actually going to give her the three. So Silver Lake starts out with a 3-0 lead here just uh, over a minute into this one. Gamble brings it up the floor, left side. Gets to Horseman, who corrals it. Gamble going to let a corner three go. No good. Rebound goes to Kelsey Lanza, the sophomore forward for Silver Lake. Pushing the floor, they get it to number 20, who misses. Rebound goes to Caden Sturba. That was Olivia Majka, who missed another freshman. Gamble to Cameron Durba, who steps and passes to her sister, Cadence, who lets it fly. No good. Fight for the rebound. Goes to Silver Lake. Tipped away by Gamble, but Silver Lake will retain possession. The Silver Lake Lakers coming into this one with a record that was not actually even at 500 this season, but... They're playing away pretty strong out of the gates here as Hilliard's up on the top guarding perimeter. That was questionable, but she was able to get the pass through. Uh, Conroy's going to let it fly off the back rim. It's off Maeve Horseman. Possession will go back in the hands of the Lakers. They'll get a new 35. Conroy will inbound yet again. Jetting out to the corner, Parmigiani goes up top for Lanza, who traveled before the jump shot. Inbound will be right in front of the Oliver Ames bench as Gamble will take it out. Silver Lake. Uh, defenders up near half court, not necessarily a press, maybe a half court press. Gamble takes it on the wing, drives baseline, puts it up with the left hand, no good. Rebound goes to Maeve Horseman, good offensive rebound. Bounce pass to Hilliard, slightly questionable, but she's able to get it through. Now Horseman drives baseline, she's fouled on the floor before the shot. Fouls on number 20, Olivia Majka. Cadence Durba will inbound here. As first substitution for Silver Lake, the senior captain, Miley Garrity, will come in. Durba gets it to her sister on the left wing, gets down into the post for Cadence, and she's fouled. She's going to the line for two. Nice bounce pass by Cameron and a good connection by the two sisters. That foul will be on Kelsey Lanza. That's her second, so she'll be... I would assume coming out. First free throw goes for Cadence Durbo. Second free throw is good. So we have a three to two ball game here early. Inbound goes to Miller. Miller looking, surveying, she gets it to Lanza who then gets it to Conroy, who picks up her dribble and has to give to Garrity. Back to Conroy. Conroy resets, top of the key. Gives to Parmigiani. Stolen away by Maeve Hilliard. Nice defense by the Tigers as they're going to push the floor. Paul is tipped out of bounds by Miller. Oway will retain possession. Gamble to Horseman. Horseman driving, gives back to Gamble. Drives left. She's going to put up an errant shot, but offensive rebound goes to Horseman, but she cannot connect as Miller will take it up the floor here, crossing over for Silver Lake. 
gives to Conroy. He thinks about it. She's going to let it fly in the face of Sarah Hilliard. It will not go, and it goes out of bounds. Possession goes back to the Tigers as Annie Riley will sub into the game for Maeve Horseman here. Annie Riley, the senior, she's been strong off the bench so far this season for the Tigers. Here is Gamble, left side of the floor, setting up the offense. Gets it to Cameron Durbin. She's going to let it fly off the catch and shoot. Hits the front rim. Rebound goes to Molly Miller. Sophomore guard into the game for the Lakers. Giving to Lonza. She lets it go. Hits the front rim. Almost gets her own rebound, but Annie Riley's able to fight for it and bring it in. Gamble crosses over the referee and tries to give into the corner for Riley down into the paint for Hilliard. Hilliard up to Cadence Durba, who ups up fakes, drives, and is fouled. Foul will be on... I'm uh, not sure. They flash it as number 99. Durba goes up. She is not able to make that one go. As... Lonza brings it up the floor, gets it to Miller. Miller ups, up fakes and drives on Gamble, but she plays good defense. Conroy resets with 20. Hilliard on the perimeter with those long arms guarding Annie Riley as well. Out to Conroy. She thinks about it. She up fakes and, uh, and picks up her dribble. Uh, Derba fell for that up fake, but it didn't matter because uh, Lonza didn't shoot it. Ball goes out of bounds. Another turnover for the Lakers. Here is Cameron Durba. Cameron Durba and Avery Gamble tend to switch off with point guard responsibilities as Durba is, sorry, Hilliard is fouled on the floor as she tried to get in closer to the basket. It's four fouls early here for the Lakers. Cadence Durba will inbound. Looking, has Gamble. She goes up with the right hand and gets it to go. Avery Gamble, the leading scorer for the Tigers this season. Coach Costello looking for his team to push up defensively there. Drive by Lonza, blocked by Cadence Durba. Good defense on the perimeter and on the drive by the senior captain. She has improved her game on the defensive end this season as she was known as more of a scorer last year. Conroy thinks about it, puts the ball on the floor. Gets it to Molly Miller who lets it fly from very deep and knocks it down. Silver Lake takes a 6-4 lead with 2.5 to go here in the first quarter. Cameron Durba drives. Here's to Cadence Durba who gives to Riley who's fouled. A nice pass by Durba getting Riley an opportunity to shoot a couple of free throws here. Riley has two free throws lined up right now looking to tie up this ball game early. First one goes. Silver Lake comes into this game as the number 28 seed in Division Three. as Riley knocks down the second free throw. Olive Rams, of course, number five. Silver Lake was able to, able to defeat Agawam 59 to 44 in their last matchup. And it's going to be a harder-pressed victory tonight as the shot doesn't go for Miller, but she gets her own rebound. But Cadence Durb is able to collect the second one. Cameron Durb into the lane. Foul will be on the floor. And they will be inbounding. I believe the next one will put them in the bonus. Mary Rhodes coming into the game for Avery Gamble here with... Two minutes to go in the first quarter. 
Rhodes has played strong, complimentary basketball with the backup point guard responsibilities. Actually looks like the substitution will not be happening yet. I think they'll have to wait until after the first free throw. Olive Reams went 14 and six this season. Silver Lake, seven and 13. First one will not go for Durba. As the substitution is now good as Rhodes comes in. Like I said, definitely playing some strong complimentary point guard, backup point guard for Avery Gamble. This season as she brings a different element especially defensively to this club as the second free throw is also no good. Three ball is up and good there for Lanza. <clears throat> Silver Lake starting to heat up a little bit from outside as Durba drives, gets to Horseman. Horseman picks it up and gets to Cadence Durba for three, hits the front rim, fight for the rebound. Maeve Horseman's able to collect it. Cameron Durba driving and the foul will be on Silver Lake. That's Cassidy Conroy. So I believe as that is their sixth foul of the quarter, we are going to have some free throws here for Cameron Durba. Silver Lake playing aggressively thus far. Bunch of fouls defensively. They're putting up shots. They want to show the Tigers that they are invested and ready to play. Cadence Durba comes off the floor. Sarah Hilliard comes back in potentially to finish out this first quarter. One senior captain substitutes for another as Cameron Durba prepares for the second free throw. It's good. Conroy looking to inbound, taking her time, gets it to Lonza, they get it back to Conroy. Hilliard is playing man defense on Conroy. Lonza back over to Conroy, screen set by Garrity, the shot is no good, fight for the rebound goes to the Tigers. Annie Riley and Sarah Hilliard are able to corral it. And another foul on the floor by Silver Lake will send Sarah Hilliard to the line for two free throws. Silver Lake members of the Patriot League, Keenan Division. Head coach is Mariah Wicker. First free throw for Hilliard is good. Cameron Durba comes off. Avery Gamble comes back in, so you're going to get a backcourt of Gamble and Rhodes here to finish out the quarter, unless Costello wants to make any other substitution. Second free throw for Hilliard is no good. The rebound goes to Parmigiani. The freshman guard gets it over to Garrity. The only senior, that looked like a travel, the only senior on Silver Lake's basketball team this season, one of three captains, Conroy and Miller, the other two. This is Molly Miller. Not a captain, but number two, Sarah Miller, is the other captain. Lonza driving on the wing, and they're going to call a foul on the a blocking foul, uh, not on the floor, uh, just a blocking foul on Maeve Horseman that will result in two free throws. Maeve Horseman, the sophomore forward, has played strong physical basketball for the Tigers this season and has taken on a pretty large role with these girls and they certainly appreciate her physicality on both the offensive and defensive ends. Free throw for Lanza is good. Garrity was able to make a nice little spin move but did not matter. Here comes Rhodes, top of the key, gives to Gamble on the wing, looking maybe for Hilliard but drives herself with the right and gets it. Gamble with two buckets here in the first quarter. Oh, nice pass down into number 20. Fight for an offensive rebound, but it goes to the Tigers. They're able to keep it. Silver Lake pressing. Shot was missed by Olivia Majka there. As Tigers can hold out. Gamble gives to Riley. Riley to Hannah Dupil, who misses the layup. And here comes Silver Lake with just over 10 seconds to go. Here's Conroy, picks up her dribble. Gets it to Lanza, Lanza driving. Garrity gonna let one go for three off the backboard, no good. Conroy gets it. 
And we have a foul on the floor. It's on Avery Gamble, if I'm not mistaken. 1.9 seconds left in the first quarter, and we will have a timeout. 11-10, Silver Lake leading here early in this one. We're almost done with the first quarter. Coach Costello hoping that his girls can box out a little more efficiently to finish out the first quarter and for the rest of the game. The winner of this one will take on Minishog in the round of 16. They defeated Chicopee Comp 49 to 36 as they both had buys. Technically they both had buys in the first round, the prelims. So they got to face off in the round of 32. Like I said, the victory went to Minishog by 13, so the winner of this game will face them. Minishog is the 12 seed, so if Oliver Ames is victorious, they will host Minishog. If Silver Lake is able to stay in this throughout and come up, come away with a victory, they would be traveling to Minishog in the round of 16. So the inbound will come from Parmigiani as she will, as Silver Lake will look to put a shot up quick. It's Conroy. She lets it fly and gets it to go to end the quarter. Three pointer will put Silver Lake up by four here, heading into the second quarter of play as we will take a quick break here for just a minute here at Nixon Gymnasium. At ECAT, we're here to keep you connected and involved in the community. On ECAT, you can explore the town with Gail Devins. Hello, I'm Gail Devins, and welcome to our show, Discover Easton. Tell your story with Harrison Young on Topic Time. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. On Learn something new with the Ames Free Library. Relax with welcome the Ron the Van Dam Show. Ron Van Dam Show, that's who I am. I'm Ron Van Dam. Thank you so much. Check welcome in on the latest in live January town meetings. 2022 Select Board Meeting and Happy New Year. Stay up to date with Oliver Ames High School news and live sports. Tiger Talk. Share your thoughts on the community forum. Welcome to community forum and listen to some exciting new music so stay connected with Easton Community Access Television second quarter of play here between the Oliver Ames Tigers and the Silver Lake Lakers MIA Division 2 round of 16 matchup brought to you by Easton Community Access Television my name is Joseph Taft by the way for those who we're wondering, because I did not mention my name at the beginning of this one. I am your commentator for this one. I've been calling quite a few of the games here for the ladies this season. And I am happy to bring you some playoff basketball tonight. So to finish off the season, girls basketball actually came in third in the Davenport. They finished behind Mansfield. Actually, I'm not sure if that's true. I believe they tied. They did. They tied for second place in the Davenport. Both of them trailing Foxborough, who played a fantastic brand of basketball this season, as they have for the past couple of years. So the second quarter will begin with Durba passing into Gamble and the Tigers starting offensively. And here we go. Gamble will dribble it over to the left side of the floor. She'll cross over and go to the right side with a screen by Hilliard. Looking, gets it to Cameron Durba, who up fakes and drives to the left side. She's stopped by two defenders, but gets it to Hilliard, who finishes with the left hand. Here's Lanza, gives to Conroy. Conroy doing a lot of the ball handling for the Lakers tonight. Lanza, over to Parmigiani, gives to Lanza. There are two Lanzas on this team, I'm realizing now. Nice little move there by Kelsey Lanza, but she can't get it, get the fadeaway to go as Gamble brings it up. OA known for playing a pretty fast brand of basketball. They push it up and down the floor. They haven't scored too many 
fast break point, so Silver Lake is doing a good job of getting back in this one. Screen by Cadence Durba. Cameron looking to get down into Hilliard, and she does. Back up to Cameron, guarded by Parmigiani with eight on the shot clock. Has a couple of screens. She takes the one from Sarah Hilliard, gets it in the corner to Gamble, who's hit. No foul call. Rebound goes to Lanza, who gets it up to the other Lanza, dribbling on the left side. Air ball, rebound goes to the Tigers, but it's stolen away, blocked by Cameron Durba. Now, I don't know if I'm just realizing this now, but as the ball is, it definitely hit a foot there, but they're not going to call it. Gamble has a lane. She drives. She's blocked by Conroy. Here she comes up the middle of the floor, gets to Lanza for the layup. Now, I thought that the teams were supposed to switch after each quarter. Maybe it's just halves, but I thought that Oliver Ames would be coming down our end here to uh, playing offense, but they don't. Foul is on the floor. Again, Silver Lake continuing to play a physical brand, but eventually that will catch up with them here as that is the second foul on Conroy. They definitely don't want to see her get into foul trouble here early. But she will stay in the game. Durba looking to inbound. Gets it to Cameron Durba. Picks up her dribble, bounce passes it to the other team. So Silver Lake is going to bring it up. Garrity to Conroy. Up fakes, drives on Hilliard. Ball's tipped by Gamble. Gets it back to Conroy who up fakes. Fooled Durba, she did, but she did not take the shot. Three on the way for Lanza, that is Chloe Lanza, but she cannot get it to go. Here comes Hilliard pushing the ball up the floor. Cadence Durba gonna let a three fly off the front rim, no good, out of bounds. Silver Lake retains, or in fact, uh, excuse me, they take possession. Here's Parmigiani, gets it to Conroy, who lets it fly, hits the front rim. Cadence Durba gets the rebound. Sarah Hilliard had a lane, but they couldn't get it to her. They get it to her now. Gamble fouls on the floor. Actually, no, that'll be two free throws for Sarah Hilliard as the clock stops with 5.10 to play here in the first half of play. Hilliard, the senior captain, misses the first. Cameron Durba comes off. Mary Rhodes comes in. Second free throw forthcoming for Hilliard. It is up and it is good. Passes up to Majka and to Lanza. Lanza lets it go from three, no good. They're letting a lot of threes fly tonight. Mary Rhodes fights for the rebound, she gets it. And they call it jump ball. Not really sure that I saw it. And considering he was on the other side of the play, I'm not really sure that it was his call to make. Costello arguing that exact same sentiment, I would assume. Don't get it technical. Here is Parmigiani inbounding to Lanza. Miller down, and they get it into the corner for Parmigiani. She does not get it to go, though. Hits the front rim. Rebound goes to Gamble, and she's bringing it up the floor with speed. Stopped by a defender. It's Miller, but Durba is able to drive, and she's fouled on the floor. Again, the Lakers are playing with a brand of physicality tonight. Cameron Durba is going to come on to the floor. Hannah Dupil, excuse me, Annie Riley will come off. Yes. Inbound, top of the key for Durba. It's turned over. Sarah Miller brings it up, gets it to Garrity. She gives to Parmigiani. Travels. Cadence Durba able to close in and force that turnover. Three point game here with four and a half to go in the quarter. In the half, excuse me. Gamble will bring the ball up. Slowly walking it up for the Tigers. 
Defending is Miller. Gets it to Caden Sturba, who passes down to Sarah Hilliard. Gets fouled and won. She's going to the line for one more. A nice pass by Caden Sturba leads to a Sarah Hilliard and one. Not only has her defense improved, but her playmaking as well. And Hilliard has been strong as ever this season in all aspects of the game as she will try to hit a free throw and tie the ball game here. Substitution. Garrity comes in for Lonza. That's Chloe Lonza, that is. As Hilliard looks to complete the three-point play opportunity. Free throw is up, and she cannot get it to go. Rebound goes to the point guard, Conroy, as she brings it up. Hilliard guarding on the perimeter. Gets it down to Garrity. She lets a little post shot go. Fight for the rebound goes to the Tigers as it was a long rebound off the back rim. Here's Cameron Durba driving left on senior Miley Garrity. Gamble crosses over, drives, fouled on the floor by number two, Sarah Miller. Looks like we have three pairs of siblings on this squad as you have or maybe just two. Two Lanzas, two Millers. Gamble will be going to the line here. First free throw is up and good. As the game is tied. Catherine Farley is going to come into the game for Sarah Hilliard. Look to help this team on the offensive side of the basketball. Uh, offensive side of the basketball with physicality. Second free throw good as the Tigers take the lead here with 3.50 to go in the half. Here's Parmigiani crossing over, driving, gives to Garrity in the corner. Up to Conroy, up fakes, crosses over on Gamble, uh, picks up her dribble. Taken away, and it's a jump ball. Nice defense by not only Caden Sturba, but Avery Gamble, who came in and helped and was able to knock the ball out and cause the jump ball. So the ball will go into possession of the Tigers here as they have a one-point lead. They will look to extend that lead. Still early, of course. Farley down into Cadence Derba, who was looking for some contact, didn't get it. I believe Farley got the offensive rebound. There may have been another jump ball, so now it'll be Silver Lake possession as they switch off everyone. Oliver Ames pressing, but they're able to evade the press. They call a foul. As that pass was headed out of bounds, foul will be on Avery Gamble. It's her second. It'll be Conroy. Uh, maybe not Conroy passing it in. Hannah Dupil will substitute Avery Gamble here. Inbound goes to Conroy from Parmigiani. They get it back over to Parmigiani. Garrity back to Conroy, who drives baseline. She's able to get some space, and she's fouled. She just flung that thing up. She's going to shoot two free throws here. 3.05 to go in the quarter as Silver Lake hanging around. They've been playing a physical brand as the free throw is up and good for Cassidy Conroy, the junior captain, point guard, seemingly, one of the guards on this club. Second free throw is also good, gets the shooter's roll. Durba inbounds to Durba, brings it up the right side of the floor. It's Cameron. She slightly gets in the way, but all good. Driving left, gets it to Mary Rhodes, who is able to keep her dribble, drive herself, put it up with the left hand, no good. Farley is able to fight for the rebound. And it will stay Tiger possession. Farley was able to throw it off of a Laker defender. And they change the call. This is unprecedented as... The referee who made the call was not on that side of the floor once again. So it's the second time that uh, we've seen that happen tonight early. 
Here's Conroy looking at Parmigiani, now switching her gaze over to the other side of the floor. Gets it to Miller, Molly Miller that is, who keeps her dribble low, drives. They're going to call a travel. Not really sure what makes that a travel. Maybe a, maybe a, a pickup call, ladies and gentlemen. A makeup call, as they say. A couple of substitutions in here for the Tigers. Cameron Durba will walk the ball up the floor here, guarded by Parmigiani, who's been taking a lot of the defensive point guard responsibilities. Down to Hilliard. Ball is tipped, and it's a turnover. Conroy. Rhodes comes flying in, but can't get the steal. Here's Garrity swatted. I believe the block was by Cadence Durba, so... Silver Lake will retain possession as the ball went out of bounds off that swat. Parmigiani inbounds to Conroy. They have played a vast majority of this game, if not all of it. Garrity to Parmigiani, who up fakes, was never really going to shoot it. Miller bounce pass off of uh, Mary Rhodes. It hit her foot, so it will be a kickball violation. Silver Lake will keep it with 20. Miller will inbound. Screen. Garrity gets it to Majka, who dribbles over to the middle of the floor, gets it back to Miller, who picks up her dribble. Stolen by Mary Rhodes. Good defense to get in there and get some pressure on the ball handler. It's Andy Riley for two. Takes the lead back for the Tigers with a minute and a half to go. Conroy gets it to Garrity, who picks up her dribble. Miller lets it fly in and out. Oh, some contact down in the paint as it will be off of Riley, who fought for that rebound. Minute and 12 remains. Here's Garrity, gets it to Parmigiani for three. She hits the front rim, but the offensive rebound goes to Mashka and she finishes. Just a minute to play here in the half as it's been a back and forth quarter. Durba gonna let a three ball go, hits the front rim, rebounded by Mary Rhodes. Riley over to Cameron Durba, she lets one go for three. Front rim, another rebound by Riley. Drive by Durba, nice little carry step, and it finishes. Nice layup there for Cameron Durba, last year's second teamer for the Tigers. And when it comes to the Hockamock League, rebound goes to Caden Durba, who lets it fly over the head of Annie Riley. So that gives uh, Silver Lake a chance for the final possession of the game. Durba probably could have taken her time on that considering that would have that could have been the final possession of the quarter, but now Silver Lake will get a chance to answer here late in the half. We will have a quick interview with Coach Costello at the end of the second quarter here very shortly. I'll be asking Coach Costello what he thought about his girls in the first half tonight and what they can do better to come away with this one. 21 points is less than this team is used to putting up in the first half, I would say. But I will let Coach Costello be the judge of that. The OA cheerleaders exit the floor. Tigers will look to play 25 seconds of good defense. And if they can do if they can play stellar defense, then maybe look at the ball back and be able to put a shot up of their own to end the half. Inbound goes to Conroy. She brings it up the middle of the floor, taking her time. Hilliard with that long wingspan guarding. Gets it to Lanza. Riley needs help. She gets it from Dupil. Layup is no good. Rebound goes to Cadence Durbin. They have 12. Here comes Hilliard up the floor. Brings it up the middle. Looking, gets to Cadence Durba. With five, puts it on the floor. She gets it down into Sarah Hilliard. Riley's gonna put up the shot, misses. 
So Olive Rams was able to get a shot up there with a couple of seconds to go in the quarter, but they will sh go into the half up by one. I will get an interview with Coach Costello, and then we will go to break, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Coach Costello. Coach, first half, what did you think about it? What did you think out of your girls' effort there? I know you were looking for a little bit better effort at the end of the first quarter. What did you think of them in the second? Uh, yeah, I think effort is good. Like, we're fighting. But, you know, offensively, we're getting a little stuck on one side of the floor. So I, th I think we'll work that out. Um, you know, they hit some threes early, which we thought. We've done a much better job rebounding the basketball. Uh, and, you know, defensively, 20 points is not, is, is not bad. So we're okay there, I think. We just got to get a little bit more in rhythm offensively uh, we had some good looks and, and then we kind of I think rushed a little bit probably first tournament game but other than that I think you know if we move the ball a little bit faster get out running we should be okay I would think here in the second half definitely definitely looking for those girls to play their brand of basketball up and down the floor like they have all season coach good luck in the second Thank half you very much. all right everybody we'll catch you back at the end of the break stay tuned for more all of Rams basketball There's a storm. Join me, Priscilla Amkustolson, to explore the town of Easton and its interesting, engaging, ordinary, and extraordinary people, and meet a smorgasbord of guests, including artists, authors, musicians, business owners, community organizations, clergy, local leaders, etc., etc., etc. Community Forum at 3 p.m. on Thursdays and 1.30 p.m. on Saturdays. See you then. Hi, I'm Jen from Fantasy Crafts. Turn your average household items into fun for the whole family. Let your imagination run wild. It was my decision. You be quiet over there. Fantasy Crafts playing Monday at 3 p.m., Wednesday at 1 p.m., only at ECAT. There, I'm Gail Devins, and join me as we discover all the businesses that made Easton great. This is a wonderful, wonderful place. I cannot wait. I want to do it. I want to go there. I am definitely coming back and I know you will too because I'm telling you something. It is absolutely amazing in here. It's what a wonderful way to discover Easton. It's right here in Easton. Showing at noon on Mondays. 2 p.m. on Tuesdays and 11 a.m. on Fridays, only on ECAT. Hello and welcome to Easton News. I'm Joe Taft. And I'm Jack Ryan, and together we bring you everything you need to know about Easton, including politics. The town of Easton is undertaking a crucial public safety and public works facilities replacement project to enhance essential services for the community. 
community events. Mark your calendars and get your costumes ready. The Easton Food Pantry will be hosting a Halloween parade and sports. Boys soccer stayed hot, defeating Stoughton 2-1. That was the team's fifth straight division title and fourth in a row in the Davenport. With APCSM guest segment Pet of the Week. Hi, I'm Katie with the Animal Protection Center and today we have a little Iris. With help from special correspondent Wyatt Fain. Join us for Easton News. Playing 6 o'clock, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the second half of action here between the Oliver Ames Tigers and the Silver Lake Lakers in this MIAA Division II matchup round of 32 game here. Tigers hosting the Lakers tonight in a 5v26 matchup, if I'm not mistaken. I can double check that in a second. But we have basketball to attend to as Cameron Durba takes the inbound and gets it to Avery Gamble, who gives down into Cadence Durba. The teams have switched sides offensively. Cameron Durba going to let a three fly. No good. Rebound will go out of bounds, and possession will go to the Lakers. So 15 seconds into this one. Ty, uh, Lakers will get the ball back here as Conroy brings it up for her team. Gives to Majka. To Miller. Down to Lonza. She's going to let it go. I believe that was a two. Hit the back rim. Rebound goes to Gamble, and the girls will take it here. Gamble to Cameron Durba. Durba to Cadence Durba. Calling for... See, that was pretty smart because she motioned for her teammate on the wing to come up, and that brought the defender... It, it caused a one-on-one -on -one down in the paint, and Tigers were able to finish down in the paint. Shot up and good for number 24, Kelsey Lanza of the Lakers. Here's Gamble to Horseman. Gets a screen from Hilliard. Takes it, tries to get it to her. It's off the fingers and a turnover for the Tigers. Sarah Miller will inbound to Cassidy Conroy. As we're over a minute, about a minute and a half into this second half. Gamble defending Lanza on the wing. Conroy guarded by Durba. Picks up her dribble, gets it to Mashka. Mashka to Lanza. Lanza lets it go off the back rim. No good. Rebounded Sarah Hilliard. Here comes Cameron Durba. Off a pass from the senior captain. Durba looks like she wants it. Instead, uh, Horseman's going to get it to Gamble back to Horseman. Horseman driving into the paint herself. They call it travel. Uh, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I just think that I think that Horseman, there are a lot of calls against her that I'm always questionable. It doesn't seem like she's playing like a sloppy brand of basketball by any means. But it's like whenever a forward takes one step, which it looked like a good step, they're going to call another back-to-back -back travels. But like I said, it seems like whenever they take an extra step there, which it seemed like a clean step off the dribble, they're going to call a travel on the forward almost every time, unless you're a senior captain like Hilliard. So here is Durba controlling the offense at the top of the key, gets it to uh, I can't see, that's Horseman, gets it down to Cadence Durba, goes for the reverse layup, but is blocked. Possession will stay with the Tigers. Coach Costello calling out an inbound play as Cadence Durba will look to inbound. Stack at the free throw line. Timeout is called. Silver Lake's run, been running with a rotation of about maybe eight players. We've seen Molly Miller, Sarah Miller, Cassidy Conroy. We've seen Chloe Lanza. We've seen Olivia Majka, Liliana Parmigiani, and Kelsey Lanza, and Miley Garrity to some degree. Coach Costello trying to get his girls on the same page as Durba, Horseman, Gamble, Hilliard, and Durba will come out for this inbound play. Now they stand on all four blocks of the free throw line, the paint, I guess you could say. 
Cameron Durbin jets out. They get it up to Nave Horseman, who gives to Avery Gamble for three. She does not get it to go. Here comes Conroy. She gets a pass up down the floor to Lonza, but she couldn't get the layup to go. Stolen away from Avery Gamble. They get it back down to Lonza. She has a wide open layup, and she misses that one. Rebound goes to Cameron Durbin. Here's Cadence Durbin to Maeve Horseman. Layup goes. Three-point lead for the Tigers. Two tough missed layups there for Lonza. Three ball on the way from Miller, front rim. But Lonza's able to get an offensive rebound, but it is taken away by the Tigers. Here comes Avery Gamble, slings it over to Cameron Durba, who loses her dribble. She's fouled on the floor. <laughs> Conroy does not agree. She inquires upon what the ref was blowing his whistle for. I can confirm. And I quote, that's a foul, question mark? The ref said, it sure is. May Forsman looking to inbound here. She surveys the floor. Has to get rid of it. Gets it to Cameron Durba. She's pretty open on the wing. Gets it to her sister, Cadence. Looking potentially to get into Hilliard. Horseman does get it down into Hilliard. Passes on a bounce to Horseman, and it hits the rim and does not go. It's a good look. Here's Chloe Lonza, left side of the floor. She misses. And the offensive rebound goes for, I believe that was Conroy. Here's Avery Gamble taking her time up the floor with a one-point lead. We're about halfway through this third quarter. Cameron Durba able to get the pass. Caden Durba down into Hilliard, who makes a nice post move and finishes. Sarah Hilliard finishing down in the paint when the team needs her most. They'll certainly look to her for more tonight. There's going to be an offensive foul. It looked like a moving screen. Caden Durba able to make that happen. I don't want to say she influenced the call. I think it was just a moving screen. As we are just beyond the halfway point of the third quarter. Quick substitution for Silver Lake. As both Lonzas are in the game, Garrity's in the game, Parmigiani's in the game. Almost a turnover for the Tigers, but Gamble's able to take it, get past two defenders, get it to Horseman, lets a corner three ball fly, front, and uh, airballs it. She's short. Here's Parmigiani blocked by Caden Sturber. They call a foul. She threw the ball down, kind of spiked the ball a little bit, but I don't believe they're going to tee her up. That was, looked like a clean block from here, folks. I don't mean to uh, speak poorly about the officiating, but I believe everybody in the arena tonight believed that that was a block. Here's Parmigiani shooting two. This is the first. As they say, ball don't lie. Derba comes off, Horseman comes off, Parmigiani shooting the second of her two. And she misses the second. But the ball will be off of Hilliard and Silver Lake will retain possession. Parmigiani gonna inbound here after the two missed free throws. Goes to Lonza, she drives, picks up her dribble, and I, they're going to call a travel on her. She tried to do a step through, but she didn't get the superstar treatment on that one. Here's Gamble crossing over, gets it, it to Durba who corrals it, gives back to Gamble, a little bit of uh, a cluster down in the paint. Foul will go on. Parmigiani. Durba to inbound here. Double screen as Zoe Swanson is in the game here for the Tigers. Gamble drives, puts up a floater. Swanson gets the offensive rebound, puts it up. 
No good. Here's Parmigiani. She has Lonza, but it's too late. Stolen by Durba. Riley. There's a foul on Parmigiani. Perhaps a bit of a, fr a frustration foul. Tigers will take it here with three minutes to go in the third. Caden Sturba comes in. Zoe Swanson comes out. I'll tell you folks, that is a very good minute to rebound ratio for Zoe Swanson. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to make her putback attempt. Here's Caden Sturba, passes overthrown, but it is kept in by Annie Riley. Avery Gamble's gonna let a three go, back rim. Tip, and they blow the whistle, and it is a foul on Hilliard. It is on Hilliard, perhaps over the back. So Hilliard will come off. They blow the whistle again. Ref's time. Uh, substitution, there was a whistle and uh, there will be a substitution for Silver Lake. Parmigiani to inbound, Lanza takes it and she will bring it up here with Conroy on the wing, guarded by Riley. Now Swanson back in, she guards the other Lanza who drives and won. She put a little bit too much contact on her, Hilliard's going to come right back in. Kelsey Lanza to the line for a potential three-point play. Mary Rhodes will also come in for Cameron Durba. She gets it. Tie ball game, here comes Gamble. Brings it over to the left side of the floor, gets to Riley. Riley gives to Durba, who up fakes, gets in with a Euro step and finishes the acrobatic layup. Conroy really wanted to travel. Nice finish by Durba. Here's Conroy. Gets a screen from Lanza, gets it to her, maybe prematurely. She's going to let a shot go, knocks it down. A long two from about the free throw line, extended to tie the game. Here's Rhodes. Rhodes to Cadence Durba. And they call a travel on that. I guess. I just, uh, I just feel like when you have a pivot step, it's very premature to be calling travels when she hasn't even put the ball on the floor. It's not like she shuffled her feet. Conroy will bring it up herself. Just under two to play here in the third. Cadence Durba guarding her. May Horseman guards Lanza. She drives. Blocked by Horseman on the recovery. She gets the rebound and gets it to Mary Rhodes. Good job by Maeve Horseman. Crossover, but it is picked away by Lanza. We got a jump ball. Should be Tiger ball. Actually, it's Silver Lake ball. I thought the last one went in favor of Silver Lake, but I suppose I'm mistaken. I am not a referee, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Conroy. Looking, gets it to Lanza on the wing, down into the corner for Garrity. Cameron Derber going to come back in. Driving is Lanza. She puts up a shot, long two, off the back rim, rebounded by Mary Rhodes, and here come the Tigers trying to push the tempo. Rhodes gets it down to Hilliard, layup, good. That's the fast break offense that we like to see, the transition play from the Tigers as they take a two-point lead. Conroy, screened by Lanza, driving into the paint, right-handed layup goes, they tie the game. Rhodes inbounds to Gamble, gets it back to Rhodes. Cadence Durba down to Sarah Hilliard with the left no good. There's Chloe Lanza, picks up her dribble, gets it to Conroy. Hilliard up fakes, they get it back to the other Lanza who misses. Rebound goes to Avery Gamble. She fights for it and it's a jump ball. No, it's a foul. It's actually a foul, I believe, on 
Uh, Kelsey Lanza. Avery Gamble's gonna have two free throws here with 35.9 to play in the third. Whistle blown. There may be some, be some blood that needs to get cleaned up. I believe that's the case. As Gamble will wipe herself off and the trainer will attend to her. They almost took like a timeout coming out of there, but they did not. Gamble's gonna shoot two free throws here. First one back rib, no good. Substitution comes in for, actually there's no substitution. I believe the substitution will come from the shooter. It looks like that cut has opened up again on Avery Gamble, so they're gonna have to clean that up. Why the ref is looking to substitute the shooter, but she needs to shoot her free throws, so you can't make that substitution yet, because she has to shoot her free throws. The trainer tapes her up, as she will just be shooting the free throw and getting out. Gamble, the second off the rim, no good, but Hilliard, the offensive rebound and the putback. Good job by Sarah Hilliard to make something out of, unfortunately, what could have been nothing but from Gamble. Here is Conroy with 20. Tigers leading by two. Over to Lanza to Garrity now at the top of the key, guarded by Gamble. She puts it on the floor and gets it to Lonza. Lonza lets it go from three, front rim no good, rebounded by Mary Rhodes. She brings it up, she passes, and that will be the end of the third quarter. 33 to 31 here as we head into the final eight minutes of this one. Oliver Ames going to look to play a more clean brand of basketball going into this fourth quarter and try to break away from the Lakers. Hilliard has played well offensively, but it is gonna take an effort from all five Tigers on the floor at all times to put away this Silver Lake team who for 7-13 and 13 has certainly been competitive in this one. Tigers have really only lost to premier Hockamock competition. She got an update about the boys game. They are down pretty big against the number one seed in Division to Malden Catholic, but there is still time for the Tigers to mount one of their classic comebacks. But we turn our attention back to the girls here as the fourth quarter is just about ready to begin. The inbound will be taken by Durba to Gamble, who is taped up nice, and here we go. Lonza guarding the ball. They get it to Caden Sturba, who jab steps and drives, tries to get it to Hilliard, but it's slightly overpassed. Turnover, Laker ball. Conroy taking her time up the floor. Dribbles into a trap, gets it to Miller. Looks like the Tigers are playing zone defense now. They are able to get an open three, and Lonza knocks it down. They break down the zone on the first possession. Silver Lake takes the lead. Gamble looking for a screen. She doesn't use it. She's fouled hard. 
That was a combative reach attempt there by Chloe Lanza. First foul of the quarter for Silver Lake. Cameron Durbin to inbound. She gets it to Gamble, who brings it down baseline. Does not get it to go, though. Tough roll. Here's Miller. They're pushing it up the floor quickly. Gets it to Lonza. Lonza over to Conroy. She thought about it. She puts it on the floor. Dribbles with Maeve Horseman on her. Back to Miller. Miller over to Chloe Lonza. On the wing, extended, down to her sister who gets it to go, that's Kelsey Lanza. The Laker faithful celebrates that bucket. Gamble into the paint, gets that layup to go as the Tiger faithful respond. Here is Chloe Lanza, gets it into the corner for Kelsey. On the wing is Conroy, picks up her dribble. Fadeaway jump shot, no good. Rebound goes to the Tigers. Cameron Durba hit the floor, they will slow it down. Cadence, Cameron, up fake, drives, gets it to Horseman, gets it to go. Tigers take the lead back here with just six minutes left in this one. Here's Conroy, Conroy over to Lanza. Tigers look to be back in man-to-man -man coverage or man-to-man -man defense. I guess it would be coverage if we were playing football. Layup, no good. Rebounded Hilliard. And no idea what that call is. Some kind of a push-off on Gamble. So Silver Lake will get the ball back here. Every point counts here in this fourth quarter as OA looks to defend. Inbound from Conroy. Gets it up to Chloe Lanza who drives on Durba. Doesn't finish. Cadence is able to slap the rebound over and Horseman is unable to keep possession of the basketball down on the other side of the floor. Here comes Conroy again. Could have been an easy two for the Tigers. Lonza drives on Horseman. Foul on Horseman. It's a blocking foul, so it was on the shot though. So it seems that Lonza will shoot two free throws here with a chance to retake the lead. First one up and no good, off the back rim. Horseman comes off, you got Riley coming in, and Rhodes. Looks like Cadence Durba will come off. Like I said, Riley and Rhodes into the game. Second free throw is off. Rebounded by Avery Gamble. So, Silver Lake unable to capitalize on two free throws. Gamble goes behind the back, hesitates, and passes it too high to Rhodes. Out of bounds, Silver Lake possession. Just under, just over five to play. Lonza driving on Hilliard, she puts it up but cannot hit it. It goes off the side of the backboard, rebounded by Annie Riley, who has Hilliard, gets it to her. That's gonna be an easy two. Oh no, she missed it, I jinxed her. Oh, but Hilliard's able to steal it back. And the foul is on Lonza. Good job by Hilliard to, to corral the basketball after missing an easy layup. Durba will inbound it. 
Gets it to Gamble, who lets a three ball fly. Misses. Derba got her hands on it, so it goes back into the possession of the Tigers. Riley, nice little move. Gets it. Timeout by Coach Costello. A nice shot by Annie Riley as she flashes a smile, and the Tigers are up by three. 4.34 to play in this one. Trainer's going to take another look at that knee on Avery Gamble. Four thirty-four to play in the ball game here as the Tigers will send out Gamble, Rhodes, Derba, Hilliard, and Riley. Silver Lake will respond with Parmigiani, Conroy, Garrity, Lanza, and Majka. Turnover taken away by Avery Gamble. Euro steps in the lane. There was some contact, but she can't get it to go. Definitely looked like some contact from here. Here's Conroy. She picks up her dribble off the step back. Majka can't get it to go. And Tigers get the rebound. They slow it down. Gamble with Lanza on her. Good screen by Hilliard. And she is no foul to jump ball as the defender was able to get their hands on it. Cameron Durba back in, Mary Rhodes coming off. Three point ball game, possession goes in favor of the Lakers. So here they come slowly up the floor. Conroy with Cadence Durba on her at the top of the key, gets it over to Miller. Miller down into Majka who puts it up, can't get it. Here's Cadence Derba, passes to Gamble, and then to Riley down in the post. A travel. Seem, I don't know. Here's Sarah Miller. Conroy. Three ball is no good for Lanza. Rebound. They're going to call a jump ball. Gamble hit the ground hard. Will be Tiger possession here. Just over three to play. Three point lead for the Tigers as well. Gamble catches it, gives to Durba. Durba gives to her sister. Down into Hilliard, who has some space, and she knocks down the layup. Sarah Hilliard, time and time again, coming through for this team down in the paint, getting buckets. Here's a three ball on the way from Conroy. She knocks it down. Able to take the lid off for the Lakers, who have not done much offensively in this quarter. Derba sizes up her defender, but she turns it over, gives it to Conroy, who takes it up herself. Picks up her dribble, gives dribble and gives to Parmigiani, who picks up her dribble and gives back to Conroy. Derba guarding her beyond the three-point line. Does not want to give up another three-pointer. Parmigiani. Lanza over to Conroy, who does not use the screen. Now she does. They trap her, they get it to Miller. No good. That is off of Lanza. No, it's off of Gamble. Just over two minutes to play here in this round of 32 matchup between the Tigers and the Lakers.
Conroy gets it to Lonza. Lonza drives into the middle on the floor and it is a block on Hilliard. A lot of people are surprised over that call as well. Costello has some questions. Second foul of the night on Hilliard will send Lonza to the line for two with a chance to tie it here. 2.09 to play. Lonza taking her time, puts it up. No good. Does not get the shooter's roll. We have a timeout taken, believed by the Lakers. Girls team will come off the floor. Cheerleading team will come onto the floor here with 2.09 to play in this one. Last two minutes of this one as the Tigers lead by two and Chloe Lanza is going to be shooting two free throws to try and knock this game up at 41. OA Faithful gets into her. She hits it. So in fact it was only one free throw because she shot the first one before. So it is a one point game with 2.05 to play. Here comes Avery Gamble looking to extend the lead. Gets it over to Cameron Durbo. Durbo waits for a screen from Horseman, goes the other way. There's three defenders. She dishes it up to Cadence Durbo for three. She misses. Rebound goes to Maeve Horseman. Gives to Annie Riley. Back to Cameron Durbo. Cadence Durbo. Gives to Cameron Durbo. Dribbles. Gives to Riley in the paint. Good pass and a nice finish by Annie Riley. Timeout by Costello. A great pass by Cameron Durbo to put the Tigers back up by three. Annie Riley finishing a crucial bucket down low. One forty to play. A couple of defensive stops by the Tigers could finish this one. I would expect them to come out in man-to-man. -man as that has been the most effective tonight. They haven't shown too much zone, but every time that I've been able to pick up on it, the uh, Lakers have been able to capitalize. So onto the floor, both Durbas, Hilliard, Horseman, and Gamble. For the Lakers, Conroy, Miller, Parmigiani, Majka, and Chloe Lanza. Inbound goes to Conroy. Here she comes. Cadence Durba guarding her at the top of the key. It is man, cup, man defense. Man to man. Conroy's going to let it fly. No good. Rebound fought for and taken in by Cameron Durba. They try to trap her, but they get it to gamble. Great job to secure the rebound as... They will take their time. A seemingly foul goes on Lanza. Good job by the Tigers to close out on Conroy's three-point attempt. It's not over yet, but that was a very crucial defensive possession and rebound. Can't be giving up offensive rebounds this late. Pass goes to Gamble. Gamble drives. Nope, she gives to Horseman. Horseman looks, gives to Durbo. Almost taken away, but it allows Durba a step. Gives to her sister, then back to Cameron. Cameron gonna reset with, she has 20, she still has plenty of time. Gamble grabs it, 
Gives to Cameron. Cadence down into Sarah. Hilliard gives to Horseman who drives baseline. Puts up a little floater. No good. Taken away. Stolen by the Tigers. And a timeout by Costello. Wasn't sure exactly who got the steal there. But I know Sarah Hilliard came up with it. Huge steal there. Gives the Tigers possession of the basketball with just under 40 ticks. And they will get a new 35 second shot clock. So do the Lakers foul or will they try to play it out and get themselves a steal or to force the Tigers to miss and corral a rebound with just about five seconds left if they were to go that route. I believe Costello is looking to put this game away with a bucket here, which would put the Tigers up by two possessions. Tigers looking to advance to the round of 16. If they can get a bucket here, they will be in good, a good spot to make that happen. Horseman is looking to inbound here. Gamble goes down and sets a screen. Derba, they pass to Horseman. I'm sorry, they pass to Gamble. It's Laker possession. Horseman wasn't able to connect on a pass and is going to give the Lakers a shot with just over 35 to play. Crossover by Parmigiani. She gets past a couple of defenders and gives to Costa, uh, Conroy. Conroy gives to Parmigiani. Top of the key. She looks. 25 to play. Lanza with Hilliard on her. Parmigiani. Conroy. Top of the key with Cadence Derba on her. Gives to Parmigiani then over to Lanza. Lanza gets a screen but she's trapped. Parmigiani. Conroy looks for a screen and gets it. Picks up her dribble. Gives to Parmigiani. There's four. Lanza going to have to let one fly. No good. Rebound goes to Hilliard. The game is over and the Tigers survive a very strong outing by the Silver Lake Lakers. They advance to the round of 16 after what was a very exciting basketball game. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a close one. I was not sure if that shot would fall. If it did, I would have been very concerned, as would have, I'm sure, everyone in the stands here that is rooting for the Tigers. So Silver Lake's season will come to an end. They are a very young basketball team with only one senior graduating. They will look to make moves next year, but the Tigers will look to make moves next round as they will take on... I just had it. Well, they will be going on to the second round, the round of 16, and it will be a good one as they will host Minishog at the Nixon Gymnasium next time. That is just about it for me, folks. This has been Joseph Taft with Easton Community Access Television. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. Make sure to stay tuned to ECAT to find out when the next one is against Minishog. And until then, go Tigers. All of Raven Sports are sponsored by Bank of Easton, Easton Lions Club, Law Firm of Sutton and Sutton, Dutton Builders Incorporated. ECAT would like to thank all sponsors for their support in producing this sports.